Hi, my name is Ahmed Ahmed. I'm the team captain of Frogin UAV from Arab Academy for Science, Technology and Maritime Transport. I'm actually chasing a bachelor degree in mechatronics engineering and my team is from different majors. We are all passionate about creating very innovative solutions in unmanned aerial vehicles. We actually have been working towards participating in the competition for several years and it's like a dream came true as we have faced several challenges along the way. For example, in 2020, we started to learn about the competition and began preparing to compete. Then the COVID pandemic hit and the competition was delayed by two years. After that, in 2022, we faced financial difficulties and shipping constraints, which also forced us to drop out of the competition. Now and finally in 2023, we are closer to the competition than we have ever been before and we are excited to showcase our capabilities in the competition. So without further ado, we hope that you enjoy watching our video. The team was ensuring that they're fulfilling all the competition requirements, acceptance criteria, and executing each task successfully. One of these requirements is the airdrop. Each airdrop must weigh 5 pounds or less, but we may have some additional weights that limit us to only taking 2 payloads per flight, which after calculating the flight path, we decided that the aircraft should fly at a speed of 67 miles per hour in order to deliver all the payloads in time. Also, it must land softly and navigate safely and steadily in the airdrop area. So the allowable speed in the surveying and dropping area should be 56 miles per hour so we can get enough data and reconnaissance for the camera. First off, we decided on using the Foxtech EH340 Mini for its high resolution since it's equipped with 4K Ultra HD sensor capable of capturing images at 4K resolution, which offers exceptional image quality. Also, it has a 3-axis gimbal for stabilization and has a CAN bus port that can be used by the Pixhawk for gimbal control. We set up the camera feed using Python's OpenCV library. Each second of the live feed is then divided into 25 frames, and each frame, along with the aircraft's coordinates, is streamed to the ground station. Once the frame reaches the ground station, it undergoes classification using fine-tuned clip model from OpenAI, detecting keyframes that contain an object with 94% accuracy. The keyframes and empty keyframes are then sorted into separate folders. For the keyframes, the next step involves using a sliding window approach on a 4x4 grid pinpointing key subframes that contain objects. This process continues recursively until the smallest possible key subframe are obtained. Next, the key subframes are fed into a YOLO V8 CNN model identifying standards or emergent object objects based on their shapes with the average accuracy of 89%. For standard objects, color identification and OCR come into play. The color classification uses a trained CNN model which classifies the colors of a pixel based on its pixel value, which has an accuracy of approximately 97%. The classified colors are then split into two categories, where the most prevalent color is the object color, while the second most prevalent color is the alphanumeric color. To improve OCR accuracy from 40% to an impressive 87.5%, we employ ESRGAN Super Resolution Model, ensuring the best possible resolution for the text recognition. Now that we've identified the object and their information, it's time to calculate the physical coordinates based on multiple factors like location, altitude, and earth radius. A cropped image of the object along with the physical coordinates is then sent back to the aircraft. Running this process, we have three submission modes to choose from, automatic, semi-automatic, and or manual. In auto mode, all the detected objects are sent to the aircraft without human supervision, while in the semi-auto mode involves team review and editing before submission. And finally, the manual mode requires manual input of the object details through the application that we designed for this specific purpose. For the payload mechanism, we looked for a compact way to store five payloads and deliver them in a single flight, and we ended up with this mechanism, taking inspiration from the revolver gun. In each chamber is the payload which is ready to be deployed and delivered to the given targets correspondingly. The cylinder can be easily loaded before flight, and noting the PWM of each payload position, which allows us to be more specific about which payload hits the target. After reloading the cylinder, the revolver chamber is controlled by a servo motor 
and each angle of rotation corresponds a certain PWM signal that the fixhook gives the cylinder unit when it's time for the next target. Then the payload door opens when the aircraft arrives at the drop coordinates. For our communication hardware, the aircraft has three wireless transmission links. The first transmission link is the Spectrum RC transmitter with a frequency of 2.4 GHz that uses the DSMR technology. The DSMR technology makes the communication secure, fast and agile. Its range and response are impressive in 2.4 GHz noisy environments. The Spectrum RC transmitter allows for backup manual control for the pilot to take over in any unfortunate event. It has over 6 channels and range of 1.23 miles. The second transmission link is the RFD 900 plus telemetry link that has a frequency of 900 MHz and will act as the main telemetry link between the aircraft and the ground station. Finally, the third wireless transmission link will be the Ubiquiti AC bullet with a frequency of 5 GHz and this will act as our backup telemetry link and will be the main link for data transfer for the ODLC system. So as for the communication system, let's dive deeper into the development and architecture of the system. The main orchestrator that we created in the system is the proxy server, which is directly connected to the aircraft. The proxy server then outputs the signal to both the ground control station and the AI and image recognition station. Finally, the proxy server was designed to output the signal to the interoperability server, but this year the interoperability is cancelled, so we don't use this communication line anymore. To ensure secure and reliable data transmission, we implemented several measures. Firstly, we encrypted the data using the RSA encryption before transmission. Secondly, we established an SSL certificate authentication. We created an encrypted TCP session to establish a secure transmission channel. We also implemented a mechanism to handle connection failures and data corruption, which stores the data and retires transmission when the connection is restored. Additionally, we use the proxy server to protect the image recognition system host environment from external networks by verifying the data using a hash checksum technique. The proxy server decrypts the data, sends it to the ground station for processing via an API. Our internal system is only accessible through one gateway, making it hidden from external entities. Lastly, when the image recognition system detects a target, it sends it submittable to the proxy server through a separate API, which forwards it to the interop system. This data transmission ensures the security, reliability and confidentiality of data during transmission. As none of the team members is specialized in aerospace engineering, we taught ourselves how to design and build an aircraft from scratch. And only after four years of learning and experience, we were able to design and fly multiple aircrafts. So our design steps are as followed. First step is we pick different airfoils that are suitable for the mission requirements, which in our case is a stable aircraft with a mid-tier of maneuverability and speed. Then we validate the data of the airfoil on XFLR5 and also to determine the optimum angle of attack and other constants that are used later on the wing design. Then we use MATLAB to create a matching curve for our aircraft to determine the motor's required power and to validate the output data with available components. After settling on the aircraft's performance, we design the whole wing and tail given the information from the matching curve and perform CFD analysis and stability analysis on XFR5. And finally, we draw the aircraft on Inventor CAD to perform stress analysis on the inner structure of the aircraft. Then we are ready for the manufacturing phase. So we decided that the aircraft will be made of carbon fiber and fiberglass composites. But getting composites is quite challenging and expensive. So we decided to create a wood prototype first for our design so we can use it to test our system because wood is very easy to find, cheap and easy to work with. We used dummy weights while flying the wood prototype in order for us to tune it. After getting confident in our design, we are ready for the final design and manufacturing stage. So the final design consists of carbon fiber bulkheads and ribs. And as for the skin of the fuselage, it's made out of fiberglass pulled out of a resin mold that we created for both the fuselage and the wing skin. Inside the fuselage is the component tray that is bolted to the bulkheads and so it can be easily moved if there is an, any inspection or maintenance purposes. Also, the landing gear is handmade from carbon fiber and it proved its strength in the flight test as it took many rough landings. For our flight controller, we chose the Pixhawk 2.1 Orange Cube. 
The orange cube boasts a new H7 processor making it more powerful than its predecessor, the black cube. Additionally, it has an integrated 1090 MHz ADS-V receiver for location information from nearby aircrafts. The Pixhawk can be easily accessed through laptops and PCs due to its plug and play feature, allowing for an easy functionality checks and parameter modifications. Also, the latest autopilot stable firmware version allows for autonomous flight, navigation, takeoff, and landing, as well as external peripherals connections for improved accuracy. The team also created a custom landing sequence algorithm for smooth landings, and the Pixhawk 2.1 is compatible with Q Ground Control and Mission Planner software and can be evaluated through simulations. Overall, the Horus control system with the Pixhawk 2.1 Orange Cube offers a reliable and accurate autonomous navigation for various tasks. As for our obstacle avoidance system, it uses an algorithm to calculate a new flight path to avoid the obstacles. The system can detect both static and dynamic obstacles such as trees, buildings and other drones. The system works by testing the path between two successive waypoints. If an obstacle was found, the obstacle avoidance algorithm is applied to reconstruct a new path and add three new waypoints to avoid the obstacles. The algorithm uses the latitude and longitude of both the waypoints and the obstacles as well as the obstacles radius. It creates a new triangular shape around the obstacles, making the three vertices of the triangle our three waypoints. It places the first waypoint ahead of the obstacle, using the position of the first main waypoint, the bearing of the path, and the safety distance. Then it adds a second waypoint using the coordinates of the obstacle and places it perpendicular to the original path. Lastly, it adds a third waypoint following the obstacle using the position of the second main waypoint. These three waypoints form a new route that avoids the obstacle entirely. In case of multiple obstacles, the algorithm considers all obstacles and then applies the same process to avoid each of them. The obstacle avoidance system creates a new waypoint file for the entire mission, including the first main waypoint and the three waypoints used to avoid each obstacle. If, however, two obstacles were close to each other, the algorithm considers them as one obstacle and avoids them. As for our dynamic obstacle avoidance system, well, we thought of using the Ping RX module that detects any ADS-B board in the flight zone which gives Horus an update of each dynamic obstacle location and updates the algorithm to act instantaneously whenever it feels that an object is closing in. But, due to financial and logistical issues, we couldn't get the module. So, our second and budget option was to create a stereo camera by using two webcams with a known distance between them to roughly calculate the depth between the cameras and any object that gets into a certain distance between it and the aircraft. The obstacle avoidance algorithm is activated and the aircraft's flight path is updated instantaneously. We considered using the Pixhawk 2.4.8 due to its availability and cheap price, but it won't provide us with the navigational accuracy and expected autonomous behavior, so we chose the orange cube. As for the propulsion system, we thought of using an electric power brushless DC motor as that is our main field of expertise. But with a weight of 55 pounds, it's just not that efficient to get an electric motor. So we decided to use a combustion engine instead. The team analyzed the risks that might occur during the mission and the development process. So we have taken several steps to mitigate them. Our main risk during the development process was the insufficient local components. So, avoiding this risk, we made our early research and looked for outsourcing suppliers. Another risk we were facing was the manufacturing errors that causes personal injuries. In order to mitigate this risk, we used proper hazard signs all over the workspace and we followed the safety regulations during the use of dangerous tools and machines. Of course, our main risk is during any mission, which is the loss of power during flight. So, in order to mitigate this risk, we had to add an external substitution battery to ensure a safe landing in case of any battery failure during flight. And to ensure full safety, we use a fail-safe landing mode in case battery levels reaches less than 30%, so the aircraft can return to launch and land safely. Our team has achieved a remarkable success in capturing 1223 images during the test flights. Remarkably, our autonomous system was able to classify 47 out of 50 keyframes. Within these critical frames, our system identified 18 out of 20 objects, consisting of 16 standard objects and 2 emergent objects, with an impressive average accuracy of approximately 89%, all performed from an altitude of 230 feet. Manual intervention played a role despite the system's high degree of accuracy rate. With 100% accuracy, the team flagged and identified 2 objects, two remaining alphanumerics and four colors demonstrating the importance of human input in the autonomous system. 
Regarding alphanumerics, the system precisely identified 14 out of 16 letters and digits, although minor discrepancies occurred. The letter O was identified as the number 0 and the letter I was identified as the number 1. Nevertheless, the flawless detection of 16 out of 16 characters is a notable accomplishment. Our autonomous system also demonstrated exceptional color identification capabilities, accurately identifying 31 out of 32 colors. Only the alphanumerics color was detected incorrectly, denoted as brown rather than orange. 35 payload drops took place in 7 autonomous flights, 20 successful drops of which had 0 to 15 feet error, while 15 had more than 15 feet error resulting in 57% accuracy overall, giving us a confidence of 80% in the airdrop. The team has conducted two types of tests, simulation tests and real-life tests. Simulation tests were done to test the codes and the algorithms done by the development team in a total of 40 simulated flights, with a total of 800 waypoint sets where we achieved an accuracy rate of 96% with 768 successful and 32 errors while real-life tests done with 8 flights in total including 1 manual flight and 7 autonomous flights. The total waypoints was 140 waypoints with an average of 20 points per flight. The aircraft had an accuracy of 130 successful waypoints and 10 error, giving us a confidence of 93%. The average time per flight was between 15 to 20 minutes at a speed of 67 miles per hour. Our simulated flights consisted of 600 static obstacles, in which 573 of them were avoided with 95% avoidance rate. 70 static obstacles were set in real life with an average of 10 obstacles in each flight. With 100% avoidance rate achieved, the team is very confident about the obstacle avoidance algorithm. In conclusion, the design and software of our aircraft represents a cumulative of years of research and development. Our team has implemented advanced technologies such as the Pixhawk 2.1 Orange Cube flight controller and the image recognition system, which allows for precise autonomous flights and target detection. The data transmission system also ensures the secure and reliable delivery of data between the aircraft and the ground station while maintaining the system's internal confidentiality. Through rigorous testing and simulations, we have ensured the optimal functionality of our aircraft in various environments and scenarios. The aircraft safety features, including automated fail-safe behavior, support for different return modes, parachutes, and hardware safety switches, provide an additional layer of security for successful missions. Thank you for watching, Robin UAV.